start my recording, which we are underway. So, well, hi everybody, Ray Wood here for Jiggler. Let's get started on the call. Uh, a big welcome to everybody. If you've got a question, uh, I'll endeavor to jump in and answer any questions as we go along. I think I've got to shrink my screen. So um, today's presentation is brought to you by those lovely guys at Jiggler. Um, and what a good crew they are. John, uh, Aaron, uh, Josh, and the younger good looking one, his name's Ray. And um, anyway, the guys are working hard to bring you lots of, uh, lots of awesome ideas. Um, and let's get into it. Today, I want to talk about 10 fatal listing presentation mistakes. And I honestly believe the trouble that we go through to secure a listing uh, is, 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 is just like massive. Um, and uh, like the prospecting that we do, we nurture them, we keep them in our database, all of that. So failing to actually list the property when the time comes um, is a huge issue. I'm also going to show you how, in my view, and I don't see any reason why we can't do this, how we can get one extra listing presentation per week. If I can get you in front of one extra seller per week with these ideas, then I think that this session is going to be a pretty good investment. Uh, on your behalf. So here's what's coming. Let me give you a little preview. I want to go through the five main lead streams. I know I did this on the last one and and um, regulars like Lee and, uh, and Joanne and you guys, uh, you're going to see me double up on a little bit of stuff. I'll go through it pretty quickly. I just think it's really important. I'm going to go through the 10 fatal listing press mistakes. Um, I'll go, th I'll, I'll explain and if you, if people probably know what this is, the number one success tool, I th what I think is the number one success tool, uh, a couple of new templates that we've got going on inside of Jiggler. Uh, and if you're a Best Agents member, you're getting Jiggler for free, you've got access to everything. So if you want to know anything more about a Best Agents membership and you're not already a Best Agents member uh, and you want to get involved with that, let me know. Uh, one extra listing a week. So Let's get into these five lead streams. I'm just going to pause here and make sure there's no questions. No, everything's good. And welcome those of you who have just jumped into the call. Great to have you uh, on board. So there are only five lead streams. There can only be five places where leads come from. And I just want to make sure that you guys know about them all. Um, I don't think every agent uses every one, but those that use three or three or more seem to do very, very well. So um, don't know why that's a different color. It just is. I couldn't fix it. Professional contacts, tradespeople and contractors. Now we have one of our more popular templates inside of Jiggler at the moment is a professional contact list. It's actually that popular that we're about to bring out a couple more uh, different variations of that. So I think you're going to really like that. That's the second one. Um, and seriously, guys, you shouldn't underestimate your professional contacts, tradespeople and contractors because um, I'm talking about your mortgage brokers, the electrician, the floor sanders, the, the, the painters, anybody even vaguely related with real estate and even those not. What about babysitters, dog walkers, dog groomers, hairdressers, whatever, the people that you support in your community um, have got a duty to support, I believe. Uh, maybe that's maybe that language is a little too strong, but like the law of reciprocity, okay? If you're supporting them, uh, they should be supporting you. And but you need to, you can't just expect it. You need to coach them. You need to train them and show them how and why they should be supporting you. So they should be reaching out and and to their networks as well. And at any opportunity, telling them that you're a real estate agent and that you're amazing at what you do. And if whatever you do, if you're selling, you want to talk to Lee or Joanne or, or Kevin or whoever it might be. Number three, your CRM database obviously goes without saying, include your former buyers and sellers. Um, I just actually finished an interview with Nyra Ewings from, uh, from Queensland. And, and I think a few of you will know Nyra. She is an absolute machine. She sold, I think she did one three in gross commission last year. She sold 94 properties, listed 140. She's got two assistants. Uh, she doesn't have time for a database because she's doing 24 opens on the weekend, which is interesting. Um, but hey, she doesn't need it. If you're not doing those sort of numbers, then I think you need it. Make sure you jump onto it and grab it. So that's number three. Number four is you just listed and just sold, of course. And you've got plenty of uh, plenty of material, plenty of content, plenty of assets and collateral inside your Jiggler account to jump in and start using that. And finally, your business development area. That's the area that you want to prospect. Now, 
talking about that, um, I think my my rule and, and nothing has really changed here. I think people try to do too much. They try to reach out to thousands and thousands of people. You'll go broke doing that. Um, Garth McCoskey's method is, hey, let's just let's get let's get up close and personal with 500 people and really get as many of those relationships going as we possibly can in in any one given area then you take that out to another 500 which is a thousand then you take that out to another 1500 and at that point you're probably going to need an assistant but initially if you're just starting and I know we've got a lot of newbies on the call those of the those of you that are just starting out um, hey, you got to do this yourself. I would don't try and be all things to all people. Do not try and target five thousand or even three thousand. Just start with that those first five hundred and get to intimately know the area, get to know values, get to know the average sale prices, get to know number of sales in the area, get to know days on market. Those critical key performance indicator numbers that you should really know. So you can um, there it is. It's gone back to red. So that you can um, really have some inside knowledge and that way you're going to be able to be a massive help to sellers in in the area and hey what you're looking to do is you're looking to position yourself as the guru in the area right so that's the quickest way to do it okay let's get into the number one fatal mistake and no pre-listing kit and i've um i just went into jiggler grabbed some screenshots we've got a really simple five page pre-listing kit don't make this more complex than it needs to be. My advice is is not to send too much stuff. And here's my marketing analogy, right? If I had, I've, I've actually got some oranges in the kitchen. I should have set this up. But if I had five oranges right here and now, and we're across the room, say we're a couple of meters apart. And I said, here, Lee, grab these oranges. And I went, bang, I threw them at you. You're going to go, well, you're going to like duck for cover, right? You're not going to get the message. If I had one orange and I said, hey, Lee, grab this. And I lobbed it, gave you plenty of notice. Chances are you're going to get it. Marketing is the same. Um, we throw too many oranges. We have too many calls to action. We do too many things. So in a perfect world, what do you really want your sellers to see here? I want them to see two things. And I'm going to get into this uh, in this session. I want them to see two things specifically. I want them to see the second page here, which is my clients and their testimonials. So that just says our clients, but underneath that is where you put five or six really good solid testimonials. And I want them to see, then there's a two page questionnaire and I'll get to that. Then I want them to see the final page, which is the uh, comparable sales, right? Because that's going to be a really important um, uh, document during your listing presentation. And I'll come to that as well. So, um, uh, and sorry, there's there's just the dashboard in Jiggler where you find it. I just added this at the last minute. You'll see our old friend, the street sign flyer there on the, on the first row, three from the left. Uh, the pre-listing kit is on the second row, fourth from the left. So jump in and use that. You can create it, customize it to your colors. If you don't like that blue bar at the, at the top, get rid of it, whatever. It's Jiggler. You can do whatever you want. You can change it. But we've set up a template there that, that we've tested. Uh, that's pretty palatable. It reads nicely top to bottom, left to right. The eye sort of falls in a diagonal down the page. That's how it's meant to go. So um, so let's have a look at this. Just how important is your pre-listing kit? Now, if you're like Nairi Ewings, N Nairi was just telling me she does a five to 10 minute sort of pretty solid interview on the phone. She sets her sellers up very, very carefully. Uh, and I really like that. If you're getting into a lot of homes and you're just getting going, you can do that, but um, you got to be really careful because you don't want to you don't want to upset your seller. You don't want to you you don't want to turn them off. Um, so you can ask a few basic questions. I would never get into price, but um, what I would be suggesting is that you create a pre-listing kit. If you're a Best Agents member, you got a copy of my book, so you can include that in your pre-listing kit. It's twenty nine ninety five on Amazon, but it's free from you. And there's a few other things that we do with BA as well that you can include in your kit. But let's just have a look how important this is. So let's say your average gross com commission is $10,000. All right, can we just assume that? Um, and let's say you win one extra listing a month. That one extra listing is actually worth $30,000 because you're going to make the sale. There's the 10K, back to point number one, your average gross comm of 10,000. Uh, and chances are, 
if you market effectively using your jiggler flies around the area within the next six, 12 months, you're going to win another two sales on average 10 each. There's your 20 totals, 30,000 plus, and this is my favorite bit, you've denied your competitor a fee. So if you miss the listing, you've actually given your competitor $30,000 and you've missed out on it. So the point I'm making, isn't it worth a little extra trouble to win the listing? I'm sure nobody would disagree. Let me just check and make sure there's no questions. No, nah, okay, we are killing it. Um, so that's the scoop as far as that goes. Um, so fatal mistake number two, the seller doesn't see the testimonial before the agent arrives. So I just said, I was just talking about how important the testimonials are. Here's what a lot of agents do. They go to the listing presentation, they take a look around and then they leave stuff with the seller and they say, here you go, Mr. Seller. Here's, here's the, uh, here's some testimonials. Here's a bit more information, right? In a, in a beautiful report. Now, let me ask you a question. When is the seller more likely to look at stuff that you've sent before you arrive or after you leave? I would say, and, and, and this is anecdotal because I've asked a lot of people, but I would say before you arrive. If you want them to see the testimonials, you want your listing presentation to go as well as it possibly can. So any way that you can get those testimonials from your favorite, from your raving fan clients, any way that you can get them in your seller's hands before you actually get there is, is, is definitely worth it. You want to be able to do that. Um, so I think the biggest mistake or second mistake agents make is that they either, they either take it back as a follow-up report or uh, they give it to them there and then. And like, it's just not, it's just not going to get read. So um, make sure you get the testimonials to them beforehand. And that way you're going to be pre-sold. And when they see all, the, all these great comments about you, they're, they're going to be more inclined to want to list with you. The other thing is that if we're really ramping this up and you're getting in front of more and more potential sellers from a cold start, when I say a cold start, so you do, you, you, you really get, and I'm going to get to your marketing plan in a sec, but your marketing plan is really humming like a well-oiled machine, right? And that's just going out um, day after day or week after week. You're going to be getting in front of more what I called cold sellers, right? People that don't really know you or you don't know them. The relationship's only just started. In which case, you need to warm up the relationship as quickly as you can. And the whole idea with a good pre-listing kit and a great pre-listing and a great listing presentation is to establish more rapport. Um, you know, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So we're trying to get to that point where they know, like, and trust us more than they did the day before. So fatal mistake number three, no comparable sales delivered before the listing presentation. I'm a huge fan I know, I know a lot of people take them, take them with you, but there's that, that take them with them when, when they go to the presentation, but I'm going to come, I'm going to, you're going to see how the pre-listing kit here segues beautifully into the actual listing presentation. Uh, and for that, for that fact, it's really important. I believe that your comparable sales are part of the pre-listing kit. And when I talk, when I did those five pages before, that was just, that was just like five or six comparable sales, or you can have seven or eight. Uh, on that single sheet of paper. Because here's the thing, if you're going to look at a house tomorrow, you can quickly look up and you can see some comparable sales around it. And your brain will be firming in on a price on a window that you think the property is worth. Let's say it might be worth 600 to 650 in that kind of range, right? You know, okay, worst case scenario, 600, best case, 650. So you're going to, going to get some comparable sales in and around that. You'll get a few in the in the late fives, early sixes, a few around the mid sixes, then a few later. And you'll see how this comes together in the actual listing presentation. Okay, fatal mistake number four, no questionnaire delivered before the listing presentation. Now, in my experience as a real estate agent, I love sending out a questionnaire, just a short, sharp, simple um, questionnaire that just asks them a bit about them their motivation to buy the property, what improvements they might have done. People like telling us things that they've done to their property. They like talking about that. And this is a great way to engage them as questions. But here's what I found. If you walk to a property listing presentation, knock on the door, and they hand you 
the questionnaire, they're selling. I can guarantee you they're going on the market because their, their radar is tuned. They are getting ready to sell. So let's hope they sell with you. But that is always a key indicator. And it's a great way to engage them. Check out the questionnaire. Um, who knows? There might be something in there that's going to help you establish some rapport. So here's the thing. Too much telling and not enough listening at the presentation. So when I go to a listing presentation, I like to first, like somebody, you'll knock on the door. Um, oh, hi, I'm Ray Wood. Oh, hi, Ray, I'm Mrs. Jones. Hi, Mrs. Jones. Mrs. Jones is going to say, Ray, would you like to take a look around? So, and I've got a, I've got a decision to make then because if I take a look around, I've got to deliver my price. But if I say to her, Mrs. Jones, I'd love to have a look around, but could we have a quick chat first and ask you a few questions? I mean, she doesn't know what to do. She's going to say, sure. So you end up in the engine room, which is the kitchen, uh, and on the kitchen bench or at the kitchen table or somewhere around there. I love the table um, because you can sit down, have a chat, have a cup of tea, and she's in, and you're getting to know each other. That makes it that makes it um, uh, really worthwhile. Now, write this down. If you haven't listened to this as yet, this is where I explain how the listing presentation works really, really well. This is probably the number one. I think I'm up to episode number 163 or four. I just recorded. So if you go to topagentsplaybook.com forward slash 112, that is where you will find the ultimate listing presentation and the pre-listing kit. Okay, you'll get all of that and you'll get the prompts to reach out to me and and I can help you with all of that. So um, I've been doing that for a while. I used to sell this product for a couple of hundred bucks. Now I give it away to people through here and I give it away to Jiggler agents. I'm happy to do it because I know it's so important because I know that it works. So remember back to that, that lot of 30 grand, this is all around that. Okay. It's around guaranteeing that you get that income. Number six, agents don't create enough opportunity to establish rapport. So back to the scenario, I'm sitting at the kitchen table with Mrs. Jones Hey, we're getting the warm and fuzzies going on. It's all good. Um, we've discovered that um, we know similar people or our kids go to the same school or both our dog's name's Molly or whatever it might be. So we're wanting to get um, at every listing presentation, I'm there to close. I'm there to ask for the order. So I will do whatever I need to do in my power to make that job easier. And this is the whole, this is the whole routine. This is the whole formula around it. And I believe that that's a, not establishing rapport is, is, is a huge issue. So if you look around the house at the start, Mrs. Jones is going to say, well, Ray, you've had a look around. What do you think it's worth? And what's your commission? And don't let the door hit you on the bum on the way out. That's pretty much the way I learned the hard way. Probably like, uh, probably like some of you listening and that's, that's not too pleasant. So I smartened up and I learned to make sure that I could establish some rapport and I could delay that looking around the house. And I'm even, before I look around the house, I'm even getting into price and I'll show you how that works as well. And it works right here. Eliminate the risk of price shock. Okay, who's been in this scenario on this call? You get, you, you start to talk to your seller and you start to talk about price and, um, they say, uh, and, and you volunteer a figure, and as soon as those, as soon as those words leave your mouth, you know that you're um, very different, normally under to what they're thinking, right? It's very, very hard to come back from that. So um, uh, here's, what, uh, here's what I think you should ask. Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me ask you a question. What did you think of those comparable sales I dropped off earlier this week? I'm not asking them what they think their property is worth, right? Because they're going to say, well, that's what you're here for. I'm going to say, was there anything in those comparable sales that stood out to you? Now, I can guarantee if they're serious sellers, they will have looked at those sales. They probably already know about those sales, right? So that's a really important point. And, and I love that. I, I, I wish I could tell you, I wish I could tell you it's, it's my idea, but it's not. I've borrowed it from somebody, I forget whom, but I think it's really powerful and really dynamic. So Mr. and Mrs. Seller, so you're there at the table, um, you, you small talk, you're talking about it and you haven't had a look around the house yet, so you can't volunteer an opinion. But Mr. and Mrs. Seller, let me ask you a question. 
what did you think of those comparable sales I dropped off earlier this week? And Mrs. Jones is going to say, well, Ray, the place at number 24, um, oh, that's just in terrible condition. And you're looking at your copy and you're seeing the 24 is around X price. So you're starting to get a feel for where her head is in, in relation to price. So, um, and as far as price goes, let me just sidebar this for a second because a lot of people get hung up on this and they say, uh, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie to them and tell them, and tell them uh, they're going to achieve something that they're not. Um, guys, we're marketers. There's no recommended retail price on, on real estate right? So there's nothing wrong with, with nudging into this. You know, if a property's worth, in my view, if a property's worth, say, 620 to 640 or 650 in that kind of range, and they want to start at 695, no worries. I'm going to list it. As long as I can be assured that there's, some, there's a reasonable level of motivation there. If they're trying to get 700 for a property that's worth 550 because they want to buy a farmlet or move to the coast or buy a condo in the city or whatever it might be. I'm not the guy, right? And neither should you be. So, uh, but if they're genuine, if there's motivation there and they want their moment in the sun asking it at a high price, I'm not going to miss the listing. I'm going to take it on. But I tell you what, I'll be back there less than 10 days managing their, in less than 10 days, managing their expectations and telling them why we need to have a price adjustment and that's a whole nother discussion for another day. But Hey, let's get the listing. Let's get the listing. Let's get the listing. All right. I'm all about the listing. If we miss the listing, we miss the 30 grand. So I'm hoping everybody's getting that point. Fatal mistake. Number eight, not enough trial closes. Let me just check my question board here. If anybody, has anybody got any specific questions? No, that looks like we're working beautifully. Um, uh, if you have, I'll, I'll certainly leave some time for questions. Just keep them in mind. Here's fatal mistake number eight, not enough trial closes. So you're at the presentation. You've had a look around. Okay. You might've discussed price. You're back at the kitchen table. Um, and you know, the, the warm and fuzzies are going on. Uh, oh, I did get a question and everything's happening in that, um, environment. Let me see what we've got going on here. And I can't work it. Here we go. Uh, number seven, hi, Tamara. Let's go back and take a look. Um, let, me, let me finish this one first. Um, oh, no, there's, they're, they're, they are my trial closes. So what I'm going to do is go back and find out what number seven is number seven and i'm recording this agent fails to eliminate risk of price shock okay so uh and you don't want to um and the way to avoid that because you've got your pre-listing kit that's already gone in and you're saying to the seller hey mrs jones let me ask you a question what did you think of those comparable sales i dropped off earlier this week that's how you eliminate price shock. The two biggest killers, I believe, in any listing presentation, the two biggest potential killers are price shock, where your opinion and their opinion is miles apart. And, it's, and I'll tell you, and anybody who's been in real estate will tell you, it's almost impossible to come back from that. It's unsalvageable. Uh, and the other one is that you haven't established rapport and you're probably doing too much telling and not enough listening. So not enough trial closes. Would you like some trial closes? Here's some of my special favorites. So hypothetically, Mrs. Jones, when would you be ready to let me bring your first buyer through? Right? So when would you be ready to let me bring your first buyer through? Language there is very important. So hypothetically, right? So you're looking around the house and you're getting all the right vibes and you're not ready to close just yet. My favorite close, and I'll come to it, is, well, Mrs. Jones, um, I'm ready to get to work. How would you like me to handle it for you? Or would you be happy for me to handle it for you? I like the word happy. I'll come to that in a sec. But this is a, that's a great, this is a great first, first trial close. Hypothetically, when could I bring a buyer through? What about this one? 
Mrs. Jones, I think a coat of paint on the fence would make a big difference to our marketing images. How about I get a no obligation estimate? Now, my, um, my view on this, my opinion, uh, my history, my experience around this is if Mrs. Jones says yes to the fence quote, then she'll say yes to you being the agent, right? She'll be very wary about saying yes to that if she's not planning to hire you, right? Because she's going to go, well, no, then I owe you something and it's going to be, it's going to be problematic. So if she says no to this, so it, it, hey, the fence might be gorgeous. Um, uh, something else presentation wise, I don't know. Is there a lot of rubbish in the garden? Um, would the front garden benefit from a makeover or something like that? Find a maintenance point, find something. Does the, does the driveway need pressure washing? Is it going to make it look like new? It's going to totally change it, ch ch change it all around. Something like that. So find a maintenance issue and just say, I think a coat of paint in the fence would make a big difference to our marketing. How about I get a no obligation estimate? Is that okay? So it's a great trial close. What else we got up our sleeve here? Ah, the photo close, my favorite. All right. I actually use this kind of toward the end if, if, if I'm kind of struggling. And, and I mean, look, here's the thing, guys. If you've gone to the trouble to go to a listing presentation, you owe it to yourself and, 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 you, and it's, you, you feel it's gone really well. You owe it to yourself to ask. You need to know where you stand. You don't want to be the agent. Seriously, you don't want to be the agent that walks out the door, hands your card timidly and says, Oh, well, make sure you let me know if you're going to sell, won't you? And they'll say, oh, yes, of course, Ray. Like, why would they? So you got to be, I think you got to be the man or the woman that um, asks the question and needs to know. And that's what I'm warming up to, right? So here's the photo close. Mrs. Jones, I think my, your home looks amazing. I think my photographer would be able to create some awesome marketing images. I don't want to use amazing twice of your home. What about we do this? I'd like, I'd like to make a time to have my professional photographer take some shots. But here's the, here's the deal. If you don't decide to sell with me, I'll give you the shots with my compliments. Now, that's a do or die. If she says no to that, you're out. If she says sure, then you're looking good. And what's going to happen? You're back there the next day um, titivating the flowers and pluff, fluffing up the cushions and arranging the light in the room and moving furniture and getting the best possible photo that you can all the time. What are you doing? You're creating more awesome rapport with Mrs. Jones and she just loves you, right? They might write a song about you, me and Mrs. Jones. So anyway, um, that is a great trial close. So at the end of the day, that's the one that you need to go with if you can't do uh, any, any of the others. So um, uh, make sure you use the trial close. Okay, number, number nine, the obvious one, failure to close. Um, you've got to ask for the order. Mrs. Jones, question for you. How do you feel about me? Let, how do you feel about letting me handle it for you? Now, I know everybody has their own way. I'm not expecting you to can what I say, uh, just as I couldn't can what you say. But it needs to be something like that. Mrs. Jones, I, lo I love your home. I'm, I'm ready to go. How do you, are you happy for me to handle it for you? I don't, I don't like to say, well, look, I want to get you to sign the paperwork or let's sign you up. Kind of sounds threatening. Um, I don't know. I don't think it sounds salesy to say something like this. What do you guys think? Um, I like to know. So um, sometimes when you've done a great listing presentation, they'll come out and they'll just give you the key, right? That's awesome. Well, here's the key, bang, and you know at that point you're ready to go. So, um, so that is the last one. Now, here's number 10. Now, what happens when you ask that question, right? Let's just go back. How do you feel about me letting it? How do you feel about letting me handle it for you? And she says, well, Ray, it sounds great, but we're not quite ready to sell yet, right? They'll often use the time, the time thing. So this is where fatal mistake number 10 comes into play, where the seller isn't selling just yet. Failure to get the promise, right? And the promise is, goes like this. 
Mrs. Jones, I totally understand and I'm totally cool with that. It's your property uh, and you know, it's your decision. You need to decide when, when the time is right. But let me ask you, when you decide to sell, are you happy to sell with me? Why don't we ask the question? You just got to ask. Remember, the magic leaves with you. We've established this rapport. The warm and fuzzies are going on. You've been selling like a crazy thing and, and using all your skills. And, and Mrs. Jones thinks you're the best thing since sliced bread. Ask the question. Because if she says yes at that point, you go back to the you shake, look her in the eye, shake hands and say, thank you. I can't wait to get you a great result. You go back to the office, do a little handwritten note. And we've got some coming out in Jiggler as well um, that you can print off and, and do a handwritten note. And it says, Mrs. Jones, it was fantastic meeting with you today. I'm looking forward to being your agent, dot, 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 when the time comes. Warm regards, Lee. Right? Done. And you deliver that because you've basically signed up on that obligation. Now, can she list with another agent? Of course she can, but she's kind of given you the promise. You've shaken on it, plus you've sent her this note, right? So the second thing is here, if you ask this question, if you say, you know, when the time comes, are you happy for me to handle it? And she says, look, I'm really not sure. You know, we haven't made that decision as yet. You still got some work to do. You've still got some. Uh, you've still got some uh, some heavy lifting to do to make sure that you can get uh, Mrs. Jones across the line. So, ladies and gentlemen, they are my ten fatal mistakes that I think a lot of agents make. So, I worship at the altar of that thirty grand, as I know you guys do. I want you to have it. I want you to have lots and lots and lots and lots of thirty grands. Um, if you do that once a month, it's 360K. If you do that for five years, it's 1.8 mil, isn't it? Something like that. So there's an extra 1.8 mil. So I really reckon it's having these things in place. And it's, and it's simply just organization. That's basically all there is to it. So the second thing I promised you was the number one uh, real estate's number one success tool. Let's see if anybody can guess who it is. Let's have a little bit of fun with this. Anybody like to guess? No guessing? All right. Oh, somebody's guessing. Yeah. <laughs> Scott and Lee say jiggler. No, as if. Guys, please. Am I, am I that shameless? Um, so uh, that, that's actually number two. So number one is <laughs> testimonials. I'm sure everybody just switch off if I said that, if I said jiggler. Testimonials are the number one thing because you can be pre-sold if you get a good testimonial in the hands of your seller before you get there. So testimonials are everything. And if you haven't got testimonials and you want them, I'm sure you all know, uh, or those of you who know me will know my strategy around here, write them for your client after You've sold a property and the client says, oh, gee, Scott, man, you that was just such a great experience. If there's anything I can ever do for you. And Scott's going to say, well, there is, Ray, as a matter of fact, I'd love a testimonial. Oh, yeah, yeah, right. I'll get right on that. Three weeks later, he hasn't done it. So what I'd be suggesting when that question comes up is anything I can do for you, Scott? I'd love a testimonial. But look, I know you're really busy. What about I just put something down in, in and I'll email it to you? That'd be great. That'd be great. You've just let the person off the hook. So write it for them and just make a reflection. Um, working with Scott was amazing. Nothing was too much trouble. I don't know how he handled the four, the four buyers all at once and getting $55,000 over the asking price was better than we hoped for. Um, we're your biggest fans. Thank you. Now, imagine five or 10 of those in front of a potential seller when they can see how amazing you are. Wouldn't that be, wouldn't that be powerful? And wouldn't, want, wouldn't you want to get that to them before, um, before you do it? Yes, Kim, video testimonials are great, but here's the thing. Are you going to be able to, are they going to look at it before the listing presentation? Maybe, maybe not. If you've got a simple five page document that you can get into the, get to your seller before you arrive, and they've just got this, and it only needs to be a sentence. For goodness sake, guys, don't send a letter. Don't send war and peace. 
because um, um, what do they say? Clinical tests have shown that people just go to sleep when they see lots of copy, right? Unless you're reading a book or something that's really engaging or a story, then please don't send lots of stuff because people aren't going to see it. That's why you, your um, pre-listing pre kit just needs to be five simple pages, covering letter, testimonials, two pages of, um, I can only hold five fingers up at once, I can't do that, two pages of questionnaire and then those comparable sales right at the end because you can almost guarantee that stuff is going to get looked at. So testimonials, super, super, super important. Make sure you've got a stack of them. I mean, what else costs you nothing, lasts forever and is priceless? The testimonial. What am I? Here's a couple of recent uh, templates. This one is trending like crazy uh, jiggler at the moment. Um, I think we're in 130 countries. This is going off the charts in about 50 countries at the moment, 40 to 50. So we had a look at the stats last week. So there's obviously the world is in a boom. Uh, if your market is hot, 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 then you want to get this out there. Yes, you can change the colors. Um, you can change the blue to red. You can change it to your corporate. You can change everything. It's Jiggler. So that's the front of a DL card. You guys know what I mean. Uh, for our American viewers, um, I'm talking about a what, what you guys call a mailer. Okay, a Norman mailer. It's about this. It's about the size of an envelope. Where's an envelope? I've got one on my desk. So it's about the, it's like a, what we call a DL or what you call an eight by 11 into three, sort of that big. Okay. So that's the front page. Second page is like this, right? Really strong call to action over on the right. Yes, you can change that tint. You can change that color. We all know property markets can change, but right now conditions for property sellers have never been better. Now in the States, um, Yesterday, interest rates were dropped officially. Uh, in Canada today, they, they were dropped officially half a point. And the same in Australia, I think, yesterday. So, um, hey, rates are down. Seriously, if you're working with buyers at the moment, you're negotiating, um, you want to say to them, hey, let's get this offer accepted before the owner works out rates are down and they'll be asking for more money. Right, let's get these deals across the line. Use it, leverage it. Here's a call to action over on the right. We all know that every storm passes and these conditions can't, actually like won't, but can't last forever. At uh, Jiggler Real Estate, we're selling up a storm. Call or text me on. So don't put in there, and I see I've got an email address at the bottom and, and a phone number. Keep it really simple, guys. Just keep it super simple. Call or text me on number to arrange a property market update. And that's my phone number in there. So, uh, but I suggest you put yours. So the good thing about this as well, this, this flyer here, this is an evergreen. You'll notice that it's not, um, it's not, it doesn't refer to a date. It doesn't refer to a time. It doesn't refer to a season. It's, it's uh, totally customized to you. So why not get 10,000 of these done so you can get 500 off uh, every other week or something like that? get a bulk run done, it's less per unit. Now we've done this one as well. You can see this is for Colin Warbank in Pemberton in WA, affectionately known as Pemby. Important notice uh, to property owners in Pemby, a property has just been sold, a list, just been listed, sorry, for sale in your area. Now, this is a great flyer when you're prospecting in your patch around other agents listings, if in fact that's legal in your area. If your real estate board or institute has got a law that says you can't do that, then you can't do that. You work out your own rules. I'm just saying that this is working and trending really hard at the moment. Again, on the back of that one, that's the front, but on the back, that's the front, but on the back is the testimonial. Now, the thing that's missing here, testimonials should have uh, Ray Wood, Toronto, should have the owner's first name, last name, and the area down the bottom because. A lot of people think testimonials are BS um, and I'm, 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 I'm not for one minute suggesting that you would. I never, I never did. All my testimonials are real. Some of them, okay. I wrote for some of my sellers. I'm the first to agree, but they signed off on them. And to this day, uh, the, the agents that use my book and use testimonials for, for, for the book to this day, um, they still have permission to do it. So you get a, you got a, a good testimonial in there, short and sweet, and put the owner's uh, name and issue and um, 
address or where they live down the bottom the area. Uh, that was sort of orangey. This is red. Same deal. That was a just listed. This is a just sold. So you can include that underneath it. Okay. Let's look at how to get one extra listing per week. So like my, my mission for, for, this, for this live session, it started off as if I could get you in front of one extra seller per week and say you got a strike rate of say it's really say they're both, say all four of them are selling, but you've got a strike rate of 50%. You're still going to get two extra listings in a month. Okay. So let's take a look at how, how I reckon you should do it. You've got to create your marketing plan. You've got to work out exactly what you want to do. Um, we can't wake up next Monday and go, I want to get out 30,000 flyers or do this or do that. Uh, it needs to be, it needs to be scheduled. They need to be printed. They need to be proof. They need to be ready. If you're not getting them out, somebody needs to be booked to get them out. I've heard recently that um, walkers can be found, uh, letter droppers on Facebook Marketplace. That's just what I've heard. Do your own, do your own checking out. But um, get like get finding reliable people to get this information out. Super important. So decide your patch of 500 to 1,000 homes. I talked before about working out 500, then getting to another 500, then 1,500 and hiring somebody. I would start with 500 to 1,000. Let's not get this crazy. And get to intimately know your neighborhood and know your patch so you know what's going on. Use the street sign flyer formula each week. Uh, if you don't know what that is, let me know. But it's a, it's a matter of prospecting around other, other listings. That's still our number one flyer. And it's the formula that goes with it. Um, it's not the most glamorous looking, uh, looking piece of real estate graphic marketing that you'll ever see. But boy, I tell you, it's making the phone ring. Uh, almost every day we're getting um, emails and messages from people saying how powerful it is and how many listing presentations it's won them. Um, remember back to the five things I talked about, just listed and just sold. Um, I would get, and, and back to my interview with Nairi Ewings, her just listed and just sold, she does a thousand. She does a, a thousand for, for everyone. If you're in an area where you can do it, get them out, get just listed a thousand. And I would, if you're looking for listings at the moment, you don't have a lot of stock and you have time, why not door knock at 50 around the closest where the property's just been listed? And you can knock on the door, say, hi, I'm Ray from XYZ Realty, just a courtesy call. Use the word courtesy because it implies I'm giving you something you need to listen. Quick courtesy call, just wanted to let you know a house around the corner has just been listed for sale. And you can go from there. It doesn't need to be your listing. Just prospect around it. That's where the value is. Same with just sold. I'd get a thousand out if in your area and door knock around 50. Create your professional contact list. This is just this has been a really big trending template. It only came out, I think, last month, but so many agents have picked it up and are using it. So the professional contacts they're putting on their list and they're actually mailing it out to those people as well. So people can see that they are on they are on your list. And it's a reminder that no such thing as a free lunch. They know that they're going to be helping you out as well. So um and follow my pre-listing kit and listing presentation formula. Uh, and I've had so much great feedback on this. It's probably, after writing the book, How to Sell Your Home for More, it's probably the number one thing that I've done that I'm most proud of because it's won so many agents so much business. So if you go to topagentsplaybook.com forward slash 112, when you're out door knocking or walking the dog or riding the bike or going for a walk or whatever you're doing, just take a listen and you'll see how uh, what I've been through today, how the pre-listing kit segues into your listing presentation. So that is pretty powerful. Um, that's about it. Happen to, happy to open up for questions. Email me, ray at jiggler.com. Join our Facebook group, the Jiggler Inner Circle. Uh, send us a, a join request. Uh, if you haven't signed up for Jiggler, what the heck's going on? Why not? Okay, let's get into some questions. Who can I help? Any questions? Here we go. Um, yes, Alice, establish rapport. Was that a question or a statement? But I would definitely do that. I mean, look, like I said, people do business with people they know, like, and trust. So establishing rapport is the number one thing that you can do. Because what you're really doing when you're establishing rapport is you are creating trust control. And trust control is probably one of the best things that you can have because the relationship 
is going to move into, hey, you just got the listing, then you're selling for them, you've got to manage their expectations, et cetera, et cetera. Um, G'day, Scott. Jiggler got two-person team profile templates. Um, I'm not sure, but why don't we build one? Why don't we build one? Why don't you, um, why don't you and I build one together? We'll call it the Scott Lackman uh, uh, two-person team profile template. Or even if you've got a concept, sketch it down, take a photo of it with your phone and send it to me, buddy. I'd love to do something like that. Um, the guys are always asking me what are, what are people looking for. So let's create something. Let me know what size you want it on, uh, whether you want it A4. Um, maybe we could do something that's uh, like vertical, half an A4. Could we sort of, I don't know. I'm just trying to think of making it cheaper and making it easier or maybe we do something and roll fold it, something like that. So, um, so that's the scoop. Any other questions? Any more questions for anybody? So, um, so that's, that's basically the scoop guys. Um, if you do have any questions, please let me know. I'm here to help Ray at jiggler.com. Uh, if you've got any ideas for templates, that you'd like to use, then uh, be sure and let me know. The street sign flyer, like I see other agents doing all really cool things, but the street sign flyer, thanks Tamara, great to hear from you. Uh, and thanks for joining us. The street sign flyer guys is smashing it. It's just, I don't know, it's just quick and dirty. I think people see the street sign and it's got Johnson Street um, and they say, hey, I live in Johnson Street, this must apply to me. So, um, uh, I think I think that's actually what happens. Um, so yeah, uh, Ray at Jiggler dot com is my email. Uh, do a search Jiggler in a circle in Facebook. If you haven't signed up, go to Jiggler dot com, get thirty days free, and you don't even need a credit card. Will be will be that is all. Any more questions before we wrap? Uh, it's been a blast. I'm going to record this. I'm going to post it to the site. We've got one more question. Uh, and it's my pleasure, Kathy. Thank you for joining us. Guys, thank you so much for joining us. It's been, um, uh, it's a blast. I always get a great turnout when I do these and uh, I'm just really happy to help and I, and I hope you got some good value. So dream big, take names and go and get some listings for goodness sake. Will you get out of here? Talk to you later. Bye.